All right, we have been talking about the series on identity, purpose, and impact, but today I want to move on because we have spent a lot of time uh, just recapping, and even when we do, a lot of new revelations start to pop up. But I just want to read to you Jeremiah 1.5, and I want you to know this is what the Bible said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, before you were born, I sanctify you, I ordain you a prophet to the nation. Here's a statement of truth, church, breakthrough church people. Listen, before you were born, God has already set you apart, sanctify you, and he has already given you a purpose before you were born. So we're all sitting here in this place, but your purpose has already been put together by God with your name on it. No one else is going to fulfill that purpose but you because when God put you in the womb of your mother with a purpose attached to you, God has given you all that you needed to fulfill that purpose. He cannot bring somebody else to do something that was ordained for you. So that's why it's important for us to understand that before we were born, he knew us. And before we were born, we were already set apart for a purpose, for an assignment. And that assignment is something that we all need to ask God here and now in time and space and say, God, what is my assignment? What is the purpose for my life? And we've asked the two questions of who am I and why am I here? So here's the question, why are you here? And I tell you this, it's not so that you can have great education. That's good and we need that. And it's not so that you can travel the world. We should do that. But make sure that it's lining up with God's purpose. It's not so that you can marry a woman and have 50 kids. You can do that. It's not so that you can make heaps of money. You can do that. But purpose is far beyond all of that. It is that thing that you know that if you, don't, if you, you cannot live without. It's that thing inside of you that you know that, 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 that gives you the deepest satisfaction and fulfillment in life. It's that thing inside of you that you know that you're born to do and only you can do it. Because all the faculties and the resources and all the technologies to make that thing happen has been given to you. So you are tailor-made for the purpose and the purpose is tailor-made for you. As I mentioned to you last week, I studied science for seven years and I'm preaching the gospel today. The moment Jesus saying me, he said to me, go and preach the gospel. And my reaction naturally, like all of us, is like, how can I do that? Do I need to go to a Bible school and study it? Lord, I can't speak. I'm, I don't think I can do it. And Jesus said, before you were born, I've already called you to preach. And it's just your own ideas and and it's just your own ideas and, and the people, that, that family you grow up with that wanted you to go to school. And, and that's great intention. Because we have good intentions for what we want to do in life. But at the end of the day, you've got to ask God, what is my purpose? Otherwise, I'll spend my whole life studying something that has nothing to do with my purpose. Otherwise, I'll spend my whole life pursuing something that has nothing to do with my purpose. So this is a good time for us, 2013, to just kind of pause for a moment and don't run out too fast, but ask the question, why am I here? What is it? What is it, Lord? In Jer uh, Jeremiah 29, it tells us 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And God here is telling us that I know the plan, I know the purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11. Write it down, don't read it now, but just flow with me because i got a lot to give you today. But this is what God is saying. Hey, Breakthrough Church people, I know the plan. Some of us may have been uh, kind of nicely forced by our parents to do things that was really more like what they want us to do. But it's not really the purpose of God. I have nothing against your parents nor my parents. They all have good intention. But God here is saying, I know the plans. I know the plans I have for you is to prosper you. Whatever the plan is, there is prosperity. It's to give you hope and a future and not to harm you. And you know what? If you run after the plan of God, when there is no hope around you, you have hope. Rather than going after the world and all its riches and you sink with all the rich people in the world. Because purpose has this internal 
power attached to it that you always feel hopeful in devastating situations. You always know that there is a future, even though it may not look like you're going to have one, but because you are in the purpose of God, everybody else is confused about their future, but you can stand there and say, I don't see it, but I know. I may not touch it, but I know there's a future here for me. And you know, people get devastated because they're pursuing their own plans, but the Bible tells us that there is no harm in the plan and the purpose of God. Somehow, heaven's insurance protection comes upon you. That's why I am so excited doing what I'm doing right now because I've never studied for it, but I feel God's protection is on me all the time as long as I stay in this lane. And don't run away from the lane, from this eternal race that has been marked out for me. I need to stay in this lane. And you can feel the protection and you can feel the presence. You can feel God is always there for you. Why? Because he said, I will not allow harm to come against you. Because in my purpose, there is no harm. You may go through some turbulence. You may go through some time of confusion. But they will not affect you because you are in my purpose. But the Bible tells us, went on to say, then you should come unto me and you call upon me and you seek me and you find me if you seek me with all of your heart. Here's a question. Do you want to know the purpose of God? Your mommy and daddy may not have any idea what it is, but God said, come and talk to me. I may not be able to clearly tell you Exactly what God has for you. I may have a, an understanding. Prophetic people may give you a, a kind of glimpse. But only you directly communicating with him. He can release the full picture to you. It may start off as a hunch. It may start off as, as a sense of a direction. But if you pursue that, it becomes clear along the way. All I had when he calls me out of my study was preach. And I'm like, Preach. This is the greatest fear of my life is to talk to people. I can't do that. And I want to tell you this, that I used, I used, we used to be given an opportunity to present our findings at school. And because I knew that I would be paralyzed in front of people, I always get drunk before I go and present my, my theories and my findings, my research. One time, I clearly remember, I went to the pub, Early in the morning, I was due to present at 10. I was already at the pub at 9. And I'm just sculling it down. I got up and I was already too drunk to even know where I was. And I just embarrassed myself so badly. But when he called me, that was the picture that popped in my mind. David, you are going to embarrass yourself over and over and over and over again in front of people. And here I am walking down in the street of Wellington. I said, God, if this is for real, please take away fear. The fear to speak. If this is for me, take it away. My next assignment was I'm speaking at this uh, Christian ministry at the school where I went to. They heard that this naughty man has suddenly changed. Like a Paul's conversion. Everybody knew me at that school as the party person. The one that get the drugs and pull everybody together and get them intoxicated and all kind of crazy things happens. And suddenly, everybody's talking about, well, he's changed. Get him to come and talk to us about what happened. So I'm walking in there and they said, well, past our brother David Vaca, would you like to share your testimony? I have no idea. What is the testimony? One week in God and they're telling me about testimony. I'm like, Test what? I just got up and I started sharing. I lied to you not. I did not know what happened. I could not even remember what I said. All I could see were people falling all over the place while I was speaking. They couldn't even sit on their chairs. They started off by looking at me, laughing, smiling, shaking, crying, crawling. And God said, David, I knew you and I set you apart for this. Now, you gonna you believe me now? I say, yeah, Lord, I can do it. There's power in my mouth now. People are not laughing. They're crying. Jesus, this is awesome. And I've been speaking ever since up to this day with confidence and boldness. And I love it. It's like I was born for it. 
And I tell you, you find your purpose, things come naturally for you. Naturally. And if you're called to be a businessman, trust me, you will, money will come to you. They'll come and chase you down. Money will find you. Money will present itself to you like, hello, I'm here. Take me, take me, take me. If you're called to whatever, I tell you this, God has already put in place things to fulfill your purpose, but you've got to come to that purpose and discover the resources and everything else that God has put in place for your call in life. Amen. So what is purpose? I think I may have some slides up there. It's what you're ultimately born to do. It's what keeps you up late at night and what gets you up early in the morning. How many of you here, you lie down to sleep and all you could think about was this one thing. Year in, year out, and you're trying to sleep and you just cannot sleep because you keep seeing this picture. You keep having this dream. This thing is in your mind, in your conscience, in your internal conversation. It's there. And you could be talking to somebody about something totally different, but your brain is thinking about something else. How many of you have ever experienced that? That's an indication that God is trying to talk to you about your purpose. What keeps you up late at night? What gets you up early in the morning? Because there's so much passion when you discover the purpose of God. God has already put passion and fire in the purpose. You don't have to ask for, give me fire, give me passion. Listen, the fire and the passion is in purpose. And people are saying, why are you always excited about, every time we see Pastor David, there's, yeah, like you're, you're, you're full of life, you're, you're happy. I'm not trying to put this on, guys. I'm not putting this on and then I go home and put on another face. Come to my house, this is me. I love what I'm doing. I love it. There is a fire in me. Every time I think about preaching, I'm like, ah, oh, I can't wait. Ah, I can't wait. Passion and fire is in the purpose. And if you're doing something now that you just hate it, get out of it. Whatever it is that you're doing right now, that there's, there's no fire. And here you are praying to God, Lord, give me fire. And God said, I, I will. And I've met so many Christians who just come to church and pray for fire and passion. Sunday in, Sunday out, and don't even change their lanes. Give me fire, give me. And God has said, I will give you fire and passion if you just get out from what you're doing and get into what I called you to do. You'll find passion there. You'll find fire there. And I'm not saying that you quit school now. And please don't, don't think that that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you go tomorrow and quit your work. You need to work, make some money, but seek the purpose of God and eventually move yourself towards it, right? Right? Please don't go out there and, and you turn up tomorrow at work and the boss is like, hey, hey, what's up? I said, I quit. I said, why? Pastor, my pastor told me to quit because this is not my purpose. I hated you, boss. I hate everything about this company. I hated everybody in here and I don't even know why I'm still here. I hate all of you. And my pastor told me to leave. I didn't say that. Then you come back and blame me because they don't pay you your retirement, whatever. What I'm saying is do what you do right now, but begin to pursue purpose on top of that. With wisdom, begin to move yourself towards it, right? Right? And don't sit there and say, oh, Pastor David, thank you for this message. I just know why I'm miserable with the woman I'm married to. No, 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 don't use that as a license to divorce your wife. I hated her. I never liked her. I never loved her. Too late. For better, for worse. For richer and poorer. For broken arm and broken legs. I'll still be here, my friend. <laughs> Are you enjoying this? You see, I don't put this on every Sunday. I come here and then you come home and, oh, David looked miserable at home. Nah. I love what I do. Because there's a fire in me that burns all the time. When I'm sleeping, I sleep thinking about it. I get up in the morning and say, oh, I love the people of Breakthrough Church. I love the vision. I love our church. I just love our church service. You know what? I am so biased. I tell everybody else that there's no other church in this place that's better than Breakthrough Church. 
And I'm not saying that I'm comparing our church to them. I just love this church. I love you guys. I think you're the best people in the world. Even if you hate me and, and say nasty things about me, I'll still come to you and say, I love you because I love doing what I'm doing. And I love messing around with your brain. I love upsetting you. It's part of my job. I love it. If I can't upset you, I should not be doing this. <laughs> Fire! Passion! It's in the purpose. Not you pursuing your own thing and forcing God to give you fire. Give me fire. I hate this thing. I hate this, Lord, but give me fire. Oh, please keep me here. Keep me alive. I'm about to die. Don't use God to fulfill your own desire. But find out his plan for you and eventually shift direction. And I tell you this, everything about your purpose has been provided for. You just need to change your lane. Amen? Are you enjoying this? Purpose is that thing that brings the greatest joy and satisfaction and fulfillment. Remember, it's more than being married to the most beautiful woman in the city. Because even the most beautiful woman can still make you miserable. Even the richest man can still make you miserable, woman. So don't be fooled by, he's a rich guy. <laughs> I'm like, I'll give you three months. Yeah, marry somebody good, but purpose is better than that. Buy the biggest house, buy a multi-million dollar home, but make sure that you begin to ask about purpose and align everything to that. Because you know what? You can have everything in this world, but if you're not in the purpose of God, you feel empty. No joy, no satisfaction, no fulfillment. Like life is just ordinary and mundane and boring. Day in, day out, you're driving to work, you're like, I don't know, why am I dying? I hate that. I wish I could die. Then just crash the car somewhere on your way to work. Don't do it, otherwise you'll blame it on me. I'm just saying. I find some Christians are so gullible, they actually act on what the pastor is just joking about. Purpose is the thing you think about, you talk about, you dream about the most. It's the thing that dominates your conscience in your conversation. It's that thing, you know. As I'm talking to you, some of you are like, I think I know what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Because you know, as I'm giving you these things, these are the indicators. It's that, that thing, it's more than a wife, more than children, more than job, education, money, wealth. This thing is called purpose. It has divine origin. It was put in you before you were born. And God wants to realize it here in time and space as you meet God through Jesus Christ. Jesus bring it back to life and bring activate that thing and that's why when you come to Jesus something inside of you just going off and you just know that wow I just I, I feel worthy I I feel like I'm something I'm someone and I'm going somewhere it's because that thing that lies dormant in you has been activated by Jesus but for clarity you still need to pursue God and ask him what is it Define it to me. Show me. I can help you, but only to a certain level. That's why the Bible said, come to me and talk to me. Pray to me. Seek me and you find me. If you seek me with all of your heart, because God is saying, I have the plan. But guess what? The plan will only be revealed as you come after me, the planner. You run after him and you run into the plan. And guess what? When you apprehend it and you begin to pursue the fulfillment of the plan, you are actually doing it in God, with God. And you'll never go off. If some people in the world, I have heard many stories of people running after the purpose of God and now they're running, running after the purpose without God. You can just tell by the fruits of their life. They're miserable. Back into drinking, smoking, womanizing, drugs. And still claim, that's the purpose of God. I'm like, if that's the purpose of God, my friend, and you're leaving God, I don't know. But something is wrong with that picture. Proverbs 19, 21. Are you happy? 
Can I say this to you? If you die without understanding your purpose and not even living to your purpose, you will die a miserable death. I have seen many people, somebody said this and I agree with it. The graveyard is the richest place in the world. You know why? There are many people buried there with unfulfilled dreams and purpose that they have not even lived or at least realized when they're still alive. And they die buried with those dreams and purposes that God has given them. It is the richest place. You don't want to die miserable. You need to be able to come to a place where you say, God, I lived it. I finished it. Time to come home. We'll talk more about that. Yes, man. Your wife is not your purpose. Otherwise, if you're sick and tired of you chasing them around, they want to go to the toilet and you're there. Hey, honey, wait, are you all right? They get in the car. Oh, can I open the car door for you? I'm not saying don't open car doors for women. Open, but for goodness sake, just do it once. Do you have to do it every minute? Don't you have a life? Life just gets so miserable because we just got the whole thing screwed up. Resource is not the purpose. The purpose is bigger than the resource. God gives you people and things to fulfill the purpose. Yes? Many of the plans in the man's heart. But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Now watch me. Watch me on this one. In this heart, your heart, we have heaps of plans. But in the midst of that is what I call God's purpose. Because we don't understand God, we pursue our plans. And neglect the purpose. But now that we've come to God through Jesus Christ, God is saying in the midst of the many plans, it's something called purpose. Now go after purpose. And guess what happened if you go after purpose? God will give you the ability to fulfill all of your plans. In fact, all your plans will fall in line with the purpose of God. All your plans get energized, harnessed, activated. Like God gives you power and resources to make sure that your plan also comes to pass because you put his purpose before the plans. But I know studying science was part of the plans and I wanted to just get out of the, the islands and get to New Zealand. It was just my plan. But God arrested me and said, David Vaca, I, I, I see that you got it inside of you, but those are the plans of a man's heart. But David, if you don't get to my purpose, those plans will destroy you. And it almost did. I've always wanted to change the world. That's why I get into science. I always wanted to change people's lives. But now I'm doing that, loving it. His way, according to his purpose. Love it. You see, we have many plans, but please be careful that you don't put your plans above the purpose. Seek the purpose and God will bless everything else that he's given for you. Amen. Psalms 133 verse 11. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purpose of, of, of his heart throughout all generations. Now hear me on this one. Hear me, hear me, hear me. This is very important. The Bible is very clear that the plans of the Lord stands firm forever. The purpose of his heart prevails throughout all generations. If you don't Pursue the purpose of God today. God will hold it for the next generation. Because whatever it is that God has planned to see come to pass, will come to pass with or without you. If I did not come into this and align myself back to God, somebody else will be doing this. And I don't want to die one day and stand before God and realize I missed everything that he has planned for me. Somebody else is standing there getting rewarded for something that I could have done. His plans are eternal. It goes on from generations to generations. But God looks for a generation that will come back to him and say, God, here we are. We are ready to serve your purpose. Don't let it pass us by. I thank God that I've, I'm, I found him now and I'm looking at the next generation, even my own natural family, I have my son Kizarek and the three others and say, God, help me to live your purpose for me in my lifetime and finish it so that I can set up a platform for their purpose in you, God. But please don't take 
what you have ordained for me and give it to my son because there will be an embarrassment for me on that day. You got to understand these things. This is how God works. He sees the end from the beginning. He stands in eternity and sees right to the end of time. And he sees generations after generations after generations. He sees it all. And he releases a purpose into the earth. And he waits for it people in a generation to rise up and understand God and download the purpose of God. Otherwise it will miss us and move on to the next. What's your purpose? Are you just going to turn a blind eye to it and the next generation catches it? What if they don't catch it? Pray that another generation will rise up. Why are we building this church? It's part of the plan for us right now to download to earth to manifest this thing in our time right now, right here. Because one day a generation will be talking about David Vaca and Tina Vaca and Glenn Rumpus and Maggie be talking about Ellen and be talking about Ron. A generation will be talking about Tony but they will only talk about you because you lived your life doing something meaningful. Purposeful. Why should they talk about you when you've done nothing worth talking about? Oh, clap your hands. It's okay. You know, it's free country. Australia. This is your only chance to make it count while you're still alive. God has something for you and he does not want to pass it on to the next generation because you became you know, uncommitted. You just begin indifferent and become cold towards the things of God. I've got one more scripture. Are you enjoying this? Are you sure? This is what the Bible says in Acts 13, 36. Acts 13, 36. Hear me, hear me church because this is going to change you. For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. The only time for you and I to fall asleep or die or leave this earth is when we know that we have served his purpose in our generation and we finished. That's what I call a sweet death. Miserable deaths are people who die knowing they haven't done anything good in life. I have visited a few funerals, few deaths before the funeral, and I've seen people in their deathbed screaming, not wanting to go because they said that a couple of seconds before you depart from this life, you already can't see whether you're going into hell or heaven. And I've seen people tearing the, the bed covers because they can see either God waiting to receive you or the devil smiling, can't wait to torment your soul forever. They can see that. And I've also seen people die peacefully with a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. I did it. My grandfather was one of those. I was the only one in the room when he passed away. At the very moment when he gave up the last two breaths of his life, I was the only one in that room and I, I counted a privilege and an honor to watch and witness my grandfather pass away peacefully. And my uncles, my aunties start rushing into the room, crying. And I'm sitting there looking at them. I said, don't cry. He's in a better place. You should be crying if grandfather was tearing the bed covers. There are people who have died peacefully. They know that we did it. But there are many who have gone from earth, from life, regretting painful, sorrowful. They know where they're at right now. Are you going to go the same way after hearing this? Are you going to do something about your life that is meaningful? And something that is of worth and value and something that is changing lives right here, right now. So when the day you pass away, we can all come around and say, this is a man of purpose. It's a woman of purpose. You know why? Because we know her life and his life. He lived the purpose of God and he finished it in his generation. That's why we should celebrate today. Now I'll tell you, I am already committed. Knowing this revelation, I'm already committed to die 
a pleasant death. And I've already told God, please hear me on this one. I've already told God, do not let my life go until I'm done. And I don't care if it's when I'm 60 or 65 or 85 or 125. Hold me back until I'm done. Because I don't want to leave this earth knowing that I have not finished everything. Some people have gone to heaven and God sent them back and said, you're not done yet, buddy. Go back. But some of us may go and not go up there, but go down there. Satan looks at you like, oh, 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 where are you doing here? Where are you from? Uh, breakthrough church. Oh, good. We like breakthrough church people who just muck around in the church. Come here. Let's kill you forever. You think, you know what? You're laughing now because it sounds very comical. But when you actually get to that place, ain't no laughing. It's serious stuff. That's why you should take your, your salvation very seriously right now. Don't muck around with Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is this thing you have is what will make a difference at the end of the day. That's why I, that's why I, I felt to say to us, don't get familiar with the Lord. This is serious business. Receiving him is serious stuff. If you're going to play with it, don't even try it. Go play with something else somewhere else, but not God. Because consequences are very severe and serious. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you the truth. Is that okay with you? But David served God's purpose in his own generation and he fell asleep. Like I, I love it. I love it. Death of a righteous man, a man of purpose is not death. It's I'm going to sleep. <laughs> When are you coming back? I don't know, but I think this is going to be a very long sleep. We don't die, we just fall asleep. We just put this earthen vessel away and move on to the next dimension. That's how we die. It's awesome. It's beautiful. And he was buried with his fathers in his body. I love that. David walked past this earthen vessel, walked out into his father Jesse and Obed and all of them and said, hey, hey, guys, I'm here. I'm here. How are you guys doing? I know you've been waiting for me. I know you've been waiting for me. I know you wanted me to come here 10 years ago, but it wasn't my time because I'm not done yet, but I'm here now. Come on, fly, fly. Imagine you leaving earth and nobody wants to see you on the other side. Oh, it was a waste of time's coming. Losers is coming. It's true. You may not think that what I'm saying is, is it's real stuff. <laughs> I don't believe you there. Well, well, I hope one day you'll see it for yourself and then you believe me. You know when Jesus died on the cross, you know what Jesus said? It is finished. It is done. And the Bible said he gave up the ghost. Wow, what a way to die. Finished. Done. Even Paul the apostle said, my departure Time has finally come. I have kept the faith. I ran the race. I finished it. You know, people of purpose, they don't die until they're done. You know, people without purpose, they die anytime, all the time. Even a little ant will bite you and you're gone. No sense of purpose. Drifting around the earth with no aim at all. One day you're here, the next day you're there. Tossed to and fro by all the ideas and opinion of this life. Your friends come to you. Let's go get drunk. Oh, let's go get drunk. So let's go church. Oh, yeah, yeah, go to church. Like you just don't know where you're going. Come on, get a hold of yourself. If you want to live a significant life, make your mind up tonight. I will find my purpose and I will live for that purpose. And I will not allow any force in this world to influence me. Because I'm influenced by the higher force. God himself. Amen. Ain't nobody can take this away from me. I love God too much for anybody to take this away from me. I love serving him. I love building this church. I love you too much. Because you know why I said that? Because one day I would like to see your face in heaven. And I like to give you a high five and you give me a high five and say, Pastor David, Pastor D, we did it. Yes, I said, yeah, Glenn, we did it. We almost didn't do it, but we did it. 
Remember that time, Glenn, I came and prayed for you and prayed you out of a hell hole? But you're here, Glenn. We did it. Give me a hug, Glenn. Oh, thank God we did it, Glenn. And I was like, Glenn, where are the other members? Like, like, like who? Like, like, like Jago. Did Jago make it? Um, um, he went on this concert in PNG. He'd never returned. I'm joking, of course. You're going to make it, right? Jugs. And you know what? It may sound comical. It may sound comical, but I would love to see every one of you on that day and we're all high-fiving each other. High-five, low-five, side-five. My, we're like, we did it! Daniel, we did it! Your keyboard have brought millions of people to the kingdom. You did it, Daniel! You did it! Where's Renee? Um, no, she's over there. Look, look, she's flying around. That's the reality of the end of this thing, guys. You got to keep that in mind. That this life we live, there's a day we're going to reap what we do for God or not do for God. Right? Right? Jesus said, it's finished. I'm gone. Paul said the same. David Vaca should say the same. And all of you should say the same. Levi should say the same. And even if Jesse does not want to come with Levi, Levi said, Jess, I don't care. You want to go that way? You go that way. I'm going that way. I don't care. You are just like Eve in the Bible. And the same goes that way. Eve went that way. You know, all women are all the same. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. What I'm trying to say is, if anyone, even loved one, try to dissuade you from following your purpose, don't allow them. You know what? At the end of the day, I tell you, you don't want to regret making a wrong move. And the last one, Ephesians 1.11. This is a real last one. In him we were chosen from when eternity, having predestined, According to the plan. Oh, hallelujah. You were chosen in him way before you were born and predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Let me close by saying this. Find your purpose that God has already planned from eternity and live it in time and space. Finish it before you die. Amen. Finish it before you die. Because that's the only proper way to die as a Christian. Celebration is all you're going to have forever. I'll come to your house and we're like high five, coffee, uh, hot chocolate, and flat wine, double shot. Thank God we made it. We finished. That's what life is all about. This life here is not a dress rehearsal. Get it right. Get it right. Because you only get to do it once.